hello hello welcome welcome to day 56 of our bible in a year challenge my name is sandra i'm gonna be your host for today welcome we are committed to reading our bibles in a year with just less than 20 minutes daily read time yes you heard me right just less than 20 minutes daily read time please kindly subscribe to my youtube channel follow me on facebook on Instagram and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. Let's get started. Day 56, February 25th, 2023. 365 days Bible reading. Old Testament, Exodus 37, Exodus 38. New Testament, Mark 8, verse 14 to 38. Psalms and Proverbs, Proverbs 6, verse 1 to 11. Old Testament NIV version, Exodus 37, verse 1 to 29. The Ark. Bezalel made the Ark of Acacia wood, two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. He overlaid it with pure gold, both inside and out, and made a gold molding around it. He cast four gold rings for it and fastened them to its four feet with two rings on one side and two rings on the other. Then he made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. And he inserted the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry it. He made the atonement cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide. Then he made two cherubim out of hammered gold at the ends of the cover. He made one cherub on one end and the second cherub on the other. At the two ends, he made them of one piece with the cover. The cherubim had their wings spread upward, overshadowing the cover with them. The cherubim faced each other, looking toward the cover. The table. They made the table of acacia wood, two cubits long, a cubit wide, and a cubit and a half high. Then they overlaid it with pure gold and made a gold molding around it. They also made around it a rim a handbreadth wide and put a gold molding on the rim. They cast four gold rings for the table and fastened them to the four corners where the four legs were. The rings were put close to the rim to hold the poles used in carrying the table. The poles for carrying the table were made of acacia wood and overlaid with gold, and they made from pure gold the articles for the, for the table, its plates and dishes and bowls and its pitchers for the pouring out of drink offerings. The lampstand. They made a lampstand of pure gold. They hammered out its base and shaft and made its flower-like cups, buds, and blossoms of one piece with them. Six branches extended from the sides of the lampstand, three on one side and three on the other. Three cups, shaped like almond flowers, with buds and blossoms were on one branch, three on the next branch, and the same for all six branches extending from the lampstand. And on the lampstand were four cups, shaped like almond flowers, with buds and blossoms. One board was under the first pair of branches extending from the lampstand, a second board under the second pair, and a third board under the third pair, six branches in all. The boards and the branches were all of one piece with the lampstand hammered out of pure gold. They made its seven lamps as well as its wick trimmers and trays of pure gold. They made the lampstand and all its accessories from one talent of pure gold. The altar of incense. They made the altar of incense out of acacia wood. It was square, a cubit long and a cubit wide and two cubits high. Its horns of one piece with it. They overlaid the top and all the sides and the horns with pure gold and made a gold molding around it. They made two gold rings below the molding, two on each of the opposite sides to hold the poles used to carry it. They made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. They also made the sacred anointing oil and the pure fragrant incense, the work of a perfumer. Exodus 38 verse 1 to 31. The altar of burnt offering. They built the altar of burnt offering of acacia wood, three cubits high. It was square, five cubits long and five cubits wide. They made a horn at each of the four corners so that the horns and the, at the altar 
the horns and the altar were of one piece and they overlaid the altar with bronze they made all its utensils of bronze its pots shovels sprinkling bowls <clears throat> meat forks and fire pans they made a great thing for the altar a bronze network to be under its ledge halfway up the altar they cast bronze rings to hold the poles for the four corners of the bronze grating. They made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. They inserted the poles into the rings so they would be on the sides of the altar for carrying it. They made it hollow out of boards. The basin for washing. They made the bronze basin and its bronze stand from the mirrors of the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. The courtyard. Next, they made the courtyard. The south side was a hundred cubits long and had curtains of finely twisted linen with 20 posts and 20 bronze bases and with silver hooks and bands on the post. The north side was also a hundred cubits long and had 20 posts and 20 bronze bases with silver hooks and bands on the post. The west end was 50 cubits wide and had curtains with 10 posts and 10 bases, with silver hooks and bands on the post. The east end, toward the sunrise, was also 50 cubits wide. Curtains, 15 cubits long, were on one side of the entrance with three posts and three bases. And curtains, 15 cubits long, were on the other side of the entrance to the courtyard with three posts and three bases. All the curtains around the courtyard were of finely twisted linen. The bases for the posts were bronze. The hooks and bands on the posts were silver and their tops were overlaid with silver. So all the posts of the courtyard had silver bands. The curtain for the entrance to the courtyard was made of blue, purple and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen, the work of an embroiderer. It was 20 cubits long and, like the curtains of the courtyard, 5 cubits high, with 4 posts and 4 bronze bases. Their hooks and bands were silver and their tops were overlaid with silver. All the tent pegs of the tabernacle and of the surrounding courtyard were bronze. The materials used. These are the amounts of the materials used for the tabernacle. The tabernacle of the covenant law which were recorded at Moses' command by the Levites under the direction of Ithama son of Aaron the priest. Bezalel son of Uriah the son of Hor of the tribe of Judah made everything the Lord commanded Moses. With him was Oholiab son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and designer and an embroiderer in blue, purple and scarlet yarn and fine linen. The total amount of gold from the wave offering used for all the work on the sanctuary was 29 talents and 730 shekels, according to the sanctuary shekel. The silver obtained from those of the community who were counted in the census was 100 talents and 1,775 shekels, according to the sanctuary shekel. One bika per person, that is half a shekel according to the sanctuary shekel, from everyone who had crossed over to those counted, 20 years old or more, a total of 603,550 men. The hundred talents of silver were used to cast the bases for the sanctuary and for the curtain. Hundred bases from the hundred talents, one talent for each base. They used the 1,775 shekels to make the hooks for the post to overlay the tops of the posts and to make their bands. The bronze from the wave offering was 70 talents and 2,400 shekels. They used it to make the bases for the entrance to the tent of meeting. The bronze altar with its bronze grating and all its utensils, the bases for the surrounding courtyard and those for its entrance, and all the tent pegs for the tabernacle and those for the surrounding courtyard. New Testament NIV version, Mark 8, verse 14 to 38. The yeast of the Pharisees and Herod. The disciples had forgotten to bring bread, except for one loaf they had with them in the boat. Be careful, Jesus warned them. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. They discussed this with one another and said, It is because we have no bread. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked them, Why were you talking about having no bread? 
Do you still not understand or see? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes but fail to see, and ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember, when I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? Twelve, they replied. And when I broke the seven loaves for the four thousand, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? They answered, seven. He said to them, do you still not understand? Jesus heals a man, a blind man at Bethsaida. They came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Why, who do people say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. Jesus predicts his death. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. The way of the cross. Then he called the crowd to him <clears throat> along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciples must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Hallelujah. Psalms and Proverbs. Proverbs 6 verse 1 to 11. Warnings against folly. My son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, if you have shaken hands in pledge for a stranger, you have been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth. So do this, my son, to free yourself, since you have fallen into your neighbor's hands, go to the point of exhaustion and give your neighbor no rest. Allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle, from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer, no ruler. Yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, if you're here and you would like to meet Jesus, your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins, and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart. As my Lord and Savior, take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you said this prayer, we are so excited to welcome you into God's family. Kindly go ahead right now, send us an email, let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist1 
at gmail.com. That is salvation in Christ 101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. Thank you for being here today. It's always a pleasure having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.